What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Love and Marriage DC Season 1, Episode 5. Yes, I am three weeks behind, but um, there was a lot that happened in Episode 5 and 6 and 7 that I want to get off my chest. So I'm going to talk about it. So in Episode 5, it starts off with Monique and Chris still arguing um, from Episode 4 because they came back from Tanzania. They're in the bedroom unpacking and Monique is asking Chris what did he learn from their trip uh in Tanzania like what did he learn about their marriage what did he learn about family what did he learn about love and all this other stuff and whatever answer that Chris gave Monique felt like it wasn't deep enough it was a very surface type of answer so Monique wants him to dig deep 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 into his soul and say something very profound something very enlightening earth shattering that's just going to blow her mind and I'm not exactly sure what she is seeking because sometimes if you keep asking for something and you keep and you keep and you keep asking for it, sometimes you're going to get an answer and it might not be the answer that you want. Because what if he digs really deep into his soul and he comes up with, you know what, I really thought about it and I don't think the two of us are, are very compatible anymore. So we may need to go our separate ways. What if he comes back and says something like this? I don't understand why Monique is so unhappy with Chris because I'm not exactly sure what she what what he's doing wrong. Um Chris tries to tell her that, you know, um, he comes home every night, you know, he doesn't hang out all night, all hours of the night at the bars, clubs or whatever. He's very hands on with the children. And I feel like Chris has come a very long way from the way he was when they were on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Because I think if I can remember correctly, when they were on uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Chris sort of like was a traditional kind of guy. And he wanted a very traditional type of marriage where he was the breadwinner and Monique took care of the home. And um, I feel like he was like that, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and so Monique, you know, she wanted to venture off and start having her own businesses. And she wanted to have a life separate and apart from being a wife and a mother. And I think that Chris took well to that. I don't know if he like was right away enthusiastic about it. But eventually, you know, she was doing it and he was still there. So he was okay with it. And he's letting her grow into whatever she wants to become. He's supporting her every step of the way. So I'm not exactly sure why Monique is so unhappy with Chris and gets so upset when he doesn't respond to her the way she wants him to respond when she's asking him these questions about, so, you know, what does this all mean to you? Or what did you gain from this? And what did you learn from that? And I don't know why Monique doesn't understand that, you know, and I'm going to generalize here. And I know not every single man in the world is like this. But I think in general, in my opinion, I think that a lot of men are just not that verbal or that wordy. You know, they, um, there are they're creatures of very minimal vocabulary. They don't really express themselves with a thousand words like the way women do. So I don't understand exactly, you know, what she's expecting. Um, them being married for as long as they've been married. I don't know if Monique thinks that it's going to be just as exciting and fun and romantic as it was in the beginning, because I think that as the marriage changes and it does change, you know, marriage is like a living thing, a living, breathing thing that grows and changes and twists and turns and takes you places that you never thought that you would go. So I think that as the marriage is growing and evolving, um, she kind of has to learn that it's okay. It's not going to be the way it used to be, but it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It's just something that's different that maybe the two of them have to be accustomed to, but I don't know, but she wasn't happy. So they talked it out and I think it ended on a really good note. They, you know, they hugged each other, they kissed and, um, yeah, so they were able to patch things up after that argument. Moving on to Jamie. So Jamie meets up with his oldest daughter, Brittany, at her home, and she invited her father over because she wanted to talk about how um, he was a little bit overbearing, a little bit controlling with his adult children. So this is stemming from the dinner that they had the night before, where Jason, the son with the vision impairment, had told his father that he didn't want to be a DJ like the way his father was hoping, but instead he wanted to work with computers. And the funny thing about this is that Jamie didn't like that. Jamie wanted him to go into DJing and in like 
in the in the average household or in the average parent child relationship, it would have been the complete opposite. The child would want to do something like a little bit like in the entertainment field where the parent wants them to do something a little bit more substantial. So it was kind of weird to see Jamie disappointed that his son didn't want to be a DJ, that his son wanted to be in computers. And I don't know if the disappointment came from really being unhappy about his son not wanting to be a DJ because he thinks that, you know, DJing is so cool. Or if it came from he was probably worried that his son may not make it in the computer field and he doesn't want his son to feel that disappointment. But it might be easier for him to pursue a career as a DJ so that he doesn't face any kind of disappointment. I'm wondering if it was more so like that. I don't know. So Brittany tells him, look, dad, you have to let the kids do, you have to let us do what we want to do. You know, you can't put the pressure on us to go down whatever path you want us to go down. So I think, you know, Jamie took heed and I think he understood where she was coming from. Moving on from that, Monique and Winter. So they meet up for dinner. Um, Winter wants to catch Monique up on what was going on in um, D.C., while Monique was in Tanzania. So Winter tells her that she met up with Arena and Ashley, you know, for them to kind of connect and see if, you know, they can form a friendship and get to know each other better. So the picture that Winter painted was like things really didn't go that well. She made it seem like Arena and Ashley began talking about her husband, Kevin, and cr criticizing her relationship with Kevin. Like the way Ashley was like, I just don't understand how you can be with a man and not even know that he didn't have his own place. You never went to his mother's basement. I think that's how it started. I don't really remember, but it seems like that's how it started where Ashley was just like, like I'm just, and she didn't come that hard on Brit on uh winter, but she was like very direct about it. She was like, you know what? I'm just trying to understand how you can date someone and not know that they didn't have their own home. They didn't have a car. They didn't have this. They didn't have that. And she was sort of like, you know, judging um, Winter kind of like, you know, why didn't you see these things? And, you know, how could you miss these things? Because it's quite obvious and it's not that hard to find out if he is a homeowner, if he has his own home or if he has his own car. So I think it kind of stemmed from that. And so then, um, your girl Winter, I think she kind of came back with, if you want to talk about the stuff that's going on with my marriage and my husband, what about y'all? You know, you mentioned how you weren't even sure if your husband was cheating on you or not. And so that's how, I think that's how the whole subject of the husbands came up. So Winter is telling Monique about it. And I thought the way Winter was explaining it to Monique, it was kind of like two girlfriends talking, you know, they're chopping it up and, you know, one girlfriend telling the other girl, let me tell you what happened when you were gone. I met up with these two broads and this is how it went down. And I said this and she said that, you know, just kind of like the way girls talk with one another, the way girlfriends talk with one another. Um, so I didn't see anything. I mean, Monique was surprised. She was like, well, what the hell happened? You know, like, how did it get like that? And then I think that when Winter said that, you know, she had these nicknames for Quick and Jamie, I think that's when Monique was probably like, wow, things really went left for you to start calling their husbands, husbands names like that. So, um, yeah, so she kind of, so, you know, and then the thing about the cheating about um, Jamie and quick cheating, I think Winter had said, you know, like, that's what they brought to me. And I was commenting on that, you know, because they brought that information to me. And then she also said, Winter also said that, yes, you know, Jamie, I mean, um, Ashley and and um, Irena talked about the possibility that maybe their husbands cheated on them, but they didn't have concrete proof, but the streets were talking. And I remember her telling Monique, you know, you don't go out, so you don't know what the streets are saying, but I'm out there and I hear what these streets of DC or whatever are saying about Quick and um, what's his name, Jamie. So moving on from that, Irena and Jamie. So they're all out with the family. Um, they're at the facility, I guess. They're like at a, at a school gym and they're there for Jason and they're playing a game you know that's uh, a game that's designed for the blind so the whole family is participating and they're all having a good time with Jason and then after all of that they sit down and Ashley tells Jason that he got into the doors program and he was so excited about that and this is a program that's going to help him it's going to teach him skills um, like independent living skills because he is ready to uh, fly out of the nest and be on his own he says I love my family but I really want to get out there and do my own thing I live my own life good for you Jason moving on from there Ashley so Ashley's having an event for her podcast I think it's called fun time mom and so she's invited some of her listeners to attend 
Island. And I thought it was really cute that they had the selfie museum. I thought that was adorable, you know, to take selfies of yourself in different backgrounds, like real backgrounds, not just a green screen or whatever. I thought that idea was really cute. So they're all there. I'm just going to try to summarize this because a lot happened. So they're all the women show up and Monique decides all the women except winter winter wasn't there yet so Monique is talking to Irena and Ashley and Monique starts the mess and she's like well let me tell y'all what um, winter told me about what happened when I was gone and so she proceeds to tell these two women well winter told me that um the streets were talking about y'all's husbands and you know um talking about you and so the, they're like what and so the way Monique painted it, she made it seem like Winter and her had a conversation solely to talk about um, the rumors that Winter heard about Irena and Ashley's husband. And it wasn't quite like that. And so I feel like Monique, Monique made it a much bigger deal than it actually was. And I kind of saw her like throwing her own friend under the bus, you know, like saying, this is what Winter was saying about y'all's husband. So of course, Irene and Ashley were pumped. And so then when Winter arrived, um, it, there was just no way in, in hell that this was going to go good. It, it went completely left, um, like directly from the beginning. So so they start going back and forth. The women are like, you know, what did you say about our husbands? You know, to Monique, because she told us that she said ABCD about our husbands and the streets are talking like, what are you talking about? And so Winter was like, well, it really wasn't like that. We were just having a conversation the way girls do. And I was just kind of bouncing off what y'all told me. Y'all told me that you thought y'all thought that y'all's husbands were cheating. So they started arguing back and forth. And um, it got so bad that Ashley told Winter to leave. And Winter minimized, you know, Ashley's event saying that, you know, it was like, a kids event and that she wasted her good heels on this and Monique admits that she kind of instigated the whole thing so what I want to say about that scene because you know there's a lot that happened and I can't go into detail of then she said this and then she said that and then she said this Monique was wrong whatever the situation was whatever the conversation was Monique was wrong because you cannot you know that you and Winter were chopping it up y'all Winter didn't come to you in this form of oh my god Monique I gotta tell you I'm having some major problems with Irena and Ashley we're just not connect it wasn't even like that it was like girl let me tell you what happened when you were gone she was just you know trying to shoot the breeze with you like the way two girlfriends do but then you presented it to the other two women like this is what Winter said about y'all's husbands this is what she heard on the street street that's how she kind of presented it and I'm like Monique why are you doing that now I liked when Monique when Monique was on Atlanta the real house was of Atlanta I liked Monique she was one of my favorite characters because of the fact that I just liked her no no let me say it let me take that back I liked her because the other women were less likable <laughs> It wasn't necessarily of anything that she did that I found impressive. Just the fact that I liked the, I disliked the other women more. And that's why I ended up liking Monique. So to see her in this light where she's like very um like untrustworthy and backstabbing with winter and that's her friend that she brought on. I just didn't like that at all. I didn't think that was cool. So moving on from that and then at the end, Monique took responsibility that, you know, yeah, I kind of instigated the whole thing. I guess she's just trying to make her show interesting. Moving on to Irena and Jamie. So Irena and Jamie have a real estate investment business and they bought this piece of property with another couple. So they're all going to meet up to check out the property to see like how bad the damage is and what's it going to cost, excuse me, what's it going to cost to renovate it. So um, Irena tells us that the night before her and Jamie had got into a really bad fight. And so things are kind of awkward with them, um, this morning because of the fight that was a little bit, uh, that was left unresolved from the night before. So as they are looking at the property with the other couple, they kind of start bickering in front of the other couple. And I don't like that. I don't think that's right. If you and your mate are having a, an issue, a personal issue, and it's not resolved, and you know, you have to make an appearance somewhere, you have to be around other people, y'all need to fix your faces and get it together. Don't ever let the world know that there are cracks in your situation until it's time for the world to know. Other than that, you know, just like, 
try to keep it together, try to keep it, you know, cute and copacetic in front of everybody else, because it makes other people uncomfortable when a couple is obviously bickering or arguing or having some major issues. It makes it very uncomfortable. They're there for business to look at this property and talk about cost. They're not there to witness the two of you go at it like Tyson and Holyfield. So And then also what I didn't like, I really, really, really hate this. Okay, it's one thing if y'all are kind of like bickering with one another or showing tension between each other to other people. It's a whole nother level when y'all are insulting each other. And I didn't like at all how Jamie was sort of like throwing jabs at Irena. And the one jab that he did was when one of the business partners said that, you know, when you look at all the damage of the home, it looks like maybe it's going to cost about 110000 to renovate this place. And Irena was like, yeah, I kind of agree. And then Jamie was like, you think you know everything? I didn't like that. Like he was um, discrediting her knowledge or her opinion that she gave about what this other woman was talking about. I did not like that. You don't do that. You don't ever embarrass your partner in front of other people, make fun of them, throw jabs at them, insult them. I hate that. And on the Housewives and DC and all of these little reality TV shows, they love doing that to their partners. And it's absolutely disgusting. So the fight that they had the night before, after Irena left uh, Ashley's event, she had another event to go to at a club where um, it was an event that her husband had put together for her best friend's birthday party. So um, Irena arrives at the event and um, she's texting or calling her husband, telling him that she's there. So he comes out. And he is going to park the car for her. And he tells her, I'm going to park the car for you. So she kind of moves the car forward. And he thinks that she's driving off. I don't know, driving off to go home, driving off to go park the car. But he thinks that she's leaving or something. And so he gets upset. And according to Irena, he starts yelling at her like, what are you doing? Get back over here or whatever. So um, Jamie's like, no, I wasn't yelling. I was not yelling at you. And Irena was like, yes, you were, you were yelling, you were yelling. And I've seen this time and time again. And I do believe that he was yelling at her. And so because he was yelling at her and there were people out there and they were like watching this take place. Cause they're like, you know, who the hell is he yelling at? What's going on out here? You know, a whole bunch of nosy spectators. Irena felt embarrassed because if she came out of the car and they saw who he was yelling at his own wife, you know, people were going to start talking. And so she didn't want to be a part of that. She didn't want to be a spectacle. So she didn't even go. She loved and went home and she had to call her best friend and explain to her best friend. Hey, she, she missed her best friend's birthday party because of the crazy shenanigans going on between her and her husband which I feel like she should not have done I think that she should have just you know been like you know what I don't give a damn what the hell this man is talking about this is my best friend's birthday party I'm already here I'm already dressed and I'm gonna go in I'm gonna have a good time you know forget about him that's what she should have done she should just completely she should have parked the car herself gotten gone uh, go inside the building and have a good time and completely pay him dust that's what she should have done so then you know so they're talking about that and then um then she tells him about how she went to Ashley's event and winter you know um indicated that people were like there were rumors out there about him about him cheating on Irena you know she was like yeah winter said that the streets are talking about you and I was like oh no they're not I was trying to defend you and the husband was like winter said who who said that he's just like I don't even know who the hell this woman is and she's talking about me so Jamie was like that is bogus that's absolute bogus so I don't know (laughs) that that, for her to bring winter up in that light to her husband I felt like she was asking her husband hey are there some rumors going around about you or going around about you that I need to know about? I think that's what she was really doing, but she was doing it under the guise of, well, this woman told me that, you know, the streets are talking. And I think she was trying to like, see how her husband was going to react. And, but unfortunately winter was collateral damage. And so now he's going to see winter as a problem. You know, winter is out here, you know, whispering in my wife's ear, speculating that I'm probably doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. And that's far from the truth. So now there's going to probably be an issue between winter and, um, Jamie. So I kind of felt bad that she did that. And then if, 
Irena is upset with whatever Winter said, that I don't think Winter is really the problem. I think Irena has insecurities about her marriage and what Winter said triggered those insecurities. But I don't think her problem is with Winter. Let's just leave it at that for now. So, um, yeah, that was that. And that was the end of that. That was um, the end of episode five. So they talk it out. You know, he apologized. Thank God. He apologized for yelling at her. And, you know, they kissed and they made up. And we know it's temporary. We know it's temporary. They're going to argue about something else later. But that is the end of episode five. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. On your way out, please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, subscribe. If you don't like this content, don't worry about it. But thank you for stopping by anyway. And I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.